Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Red Dirt Rods. Now today I want to talk to you about RCA cables. So you can spend a ton of money on RCA interconnects, buying twisted pair and heavy shielded interconnects, things like that that help reject RF interference from the vehicle charging system. We're going to show you a way to make your own, save a ton of money, and actually have better RF rejection than you can get from a pair of $150 RCA cables. And we're gonna show you guys how to do all of this for your project. Okay, now to do this, you need a few things. One, you need a soldering pin. Now, I prefer to use a soldering pin like this one that has an adjustable temperature range. This gives you better control of the temperature so you don't melt your RCA jacks. The RCA jacks, like this one right here, this is how they come. So you buy an RCA jack, it's got a little collar that threads off, you've got the ground, which is this post, and then you've got your center pin, and then there is plastic on the inside that insulates the center pin from the outer pin, which is your negative. If you use a regular soldering iron, it's really easy to melt that plastic and ruin your pin. I've got a little helper here that uh, I've just got an alligator clamp uh, clamped into my vise here. I don't happen to have one of those little bendy ones. I just don't have one here. And so we've got this set up and I'm going to show you how to solder your RC inter RCA interconnects. But first I want to talk to you about the wire. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. So a lot of people talk about Cat5 and that's what this is. So you can use this. You don't need heavy gauge wire for this. And Cat5 is twisted pair. So as you can see, each pair of these wires is twisted together. Now when you do twisted pair, what you're trying to get is a minimum of 18 twists per foot of wire. That gives you the maximum rejection. And basically what that twist does is every time those wires twist around each other, they create a cancellation effect. That's why Cat5 works so well. This is unshielded, but the act of this twisted wire creates a shield. I take that a step further, and I use something called braided technology. And this was something, as far as RCA interconnects go, this is something that Ray Kimber of Kimber Cable came up with in the 70s. I've used it for years. GM uses it on their um, uh, PWM control components such as fuel pumps in, in GM vehicles. They use braided technology that rejects any EMI or RF. And that's the beauty of a braid. It gives you a 90 degree cross between your wires. That provides the most RF rejection that you can get. I'm gonna show you that real quick. So here's one I've started. These are about six foot long. And I've already soldered this interconnect on and then I've got a third wire. Now if you just did this and left it like this, you're gonna get a ton of noise. This is just standard 18 gauge oxygen free copper primary wire. It's nothing special. But this third piece, it, you bring it in and we'll heat shrink this real quick. We've got our three wires here and we've got a small piece of heat shrink. So I'm just gonna quickly shrink this. Then I'm gonna use my vice helper. Okay. And this is a little bit tricky. The longer the run, the harder it is only because you have the excess to deal with. So you're just gonna do a, tr a standard triple braid. So your braid technique is real simple. We have a blue wire in here, which is gonna be our shielding wire. Our black wire is the ground, and red wire is the positive, which is the pin side of the RCA. So we've got this blue right in the center, and we're just gonna cross with the red, and then we're gonna cross over the black, and then we cross over with the blue, cross the blue with the red, and back and forth just like this, okay? As we do this, you'll notice everywhere that the wire crosses is 
essentially a 90 degree angle. That gives us maximum noise rejection. This creates a natural shield for RF interference, which is what you get the most in vehicles. It also works well for EMI, not as well as a shielded coax, but you don't get that much EMI in vehicles in a properly designed system. You shouldn't have very much EMI anyways. So this right here, just gonna continue to, to, to braid. The tricky part of this is as you're braiding, your other end gets twisted up. So what you can do is just take the wires and keep them spread apart like that. And each time you twist, you just pull the wires completely through and that gives you a it makes it a little bit easier. Like I said, this is a little tricky for doing long runs, but it works really well. So basically it's left side, right side, left side, right side. Always one wire in the middle, two wires on the outside. So if you do too many braids without stretching out your wire, it gets clogged up quite a bit. So we're just about done. Now, we started out with about six foot of wire, and I'm gonna show you here real quick. By the time you get done twisting, we've lost maybe a foot. So you have to take that into consideration when you're spooling out your wire. So we're at the end, and I'm gonna leave a couple inches here, and I wanna leave this uh, center grounding shield, uh, the shielding wire, I'm gonna leave that long, extra long. So we're just gonna slip this through a piece, another piece of uh, heat shrink. Bring it all the way down to the edge of the braid. With this braid of six foot length, we've lost about a foot. So if you were doing 10 foot, you would wanna start with maybe 12 foot. That's about what you're gonna look at. But what I want you to see here, where the wire crosses is at an exactly 90 degrees. So that gives you perfect cancellation. So now we're ready to solder our RCA on. So first thing I'm gonna do is I've got the RCA and I'm gonna clip this into my alligator clip. So the alligator clip here on our center pin that is going to act as a bit of a heat sink to help pull some of the heat away from that plastic and keep it from melting. We are running our uh, soldering iron. I'm running it at about 650 degrees because I want it to heat quickly so that we can get the solder to melt and bond to the post before it starts to melt that plastic. If we run it at 400, it tends to melt that plastic because you've got to hold it there for a lot longer um, for, the, uh, for the metal to heat up fast enough to bond with the solder. I am using a uh, lead-free rosin core solder. For electronics, you always want to use rosin core. I have some silver solder, but I'm out of rosin uh, flux for the silver solder. Normally, I would use silver solder for electronics, but I don't have any. This will work just as good. So I'm gonna take the collar, I'm gonna slide this up in here, and I wanna keep this shield wire out. And that bit right there, that's about how long I'm gonna run these. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip that wire and we're gonna strip just a little bit off, about an eighth of an inch. We have a small hole here for the ground. I'm going to stick the ground wire through that hole, fold the wire over, and then I'll fold this wire all the way back, okay? I'm gonna do the ground first. If you do the, center, if you do the tip first, the tip tends to get in the way of the of soldering the ground 
Okay, so I'm gonna take our soldering iron, which is nice and hot, and I'm just gonna apply it right on the top. I'm gonna touch both the brass and the wire, push those together, okay, for a second, and then I'm gonna apply just a little bit. I like to add a little bit of solder right on the top, wait for it to melt in. There we go, as soon as that starts to melt in, then we can add a little bit more. So I'm gonna let this cool off for just a second before I move on to the center pin. All right, so now what I like to do for the center pin is just take a little bit of solder, and I like to solder that, just tin this end just a little bit, and then I'll slip it into the pin, and I'll put the soldering tip right on top of it, and as soon as that's hot enough, it will accept the solder. So now we have our ground soldered, we have our center pin soldered, unclip it, and I usually, I'll just take my, uh, my Kleins here, my, and I, I'm just pinching this a little bit, that's all I'm doing. I'm not crimping it, I'm just giving it a little bit of a pinch, okay? That looks good. Now, here's a little trick I like to use. I take a little bit of silicone. I take a little bit of silicone and I put that right in the center and then I make sure it's, you know, smashed a little bit between. This just gives you a little bit of extra insulation just in case. So you don't need to wait for that to dry. I'm just gonna slide our collar back on. So that's a single channel RCA with braided wire. Now, what are we gonna do with this? Let me show you. So, this center wire, it can be completely benign and be just there to help create the 90 degree, but you can also use this as an extra shield. So you'd basically just take it, cut the end, crimp on a ring terminal, you ground this to the chassis of your head unit, and that will provide a ground drain so no current can flow through this wire because it's open-ended. That creates a sh an extra bit of shielding for your RCAs. And that right there, you do that for both sides and you will have zero noise in your system. So now we just need to do the other one and we can put these to work. All right, and that's all there is to making your own braided RCA interconnects. This five foot pair will work in just about any situation and have zero noise. Grounding the shield wire is optional. You don't have to. You can do. You can leave that part out or you can ground it to your chassis just for an, a little bit of an extra boost on your shielding. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Let's make magic.